Family, we are continuing our teaching series on casting demons out. This is part seven. This is probably going to be the last one of the series. And uh, today's teaching, if you catch this teaching, if you, if you catch this teaching, it, it's, it's potentially absolutely life-changing. Really, it has trans transformed my life dramatically. And my wife's and my, my family's and, and, and many, well, few people who have grasped these revelations. But what is so important is that whatever you are taught from this platform or from any uh, platform where you are being taught, you have to apply what you've been taught. If you, if you don't apply what you've been taught, you're just stuck in a religious deception. Essentially, that is, that's what it is. It's a religious deception. If you don't do what the Word says, it's, it's really just a deception. The Scripture says, James 1 verse 22, the NIV, do not merrily listen to the Word, and so deceive yourselves. So if you are just listening to the Word, but never actually doing what it tells you to do, you're just under a deception. Amen. You must do what the Word says. Amen? And what I want to teach you today is really, it's, it's so simplistic. It's so simplistic. But it is so life-changing. But you need to not... Uh, today, uh, last week, I preached. How many of you were, heard last week's message? Today, I need to teach you. Amen? Preaching's wonderful, but we have to get past the emotional and the carnal and the reasoning, and we, we need to, you need to be transformed spiritually. Amen? How many of you heard that, that you be transformed by the renewing of your mind? Well, it goes deeper than that. The Scripture says in Ephesians 4 verse 23, be renewed by the spirit of your mind. Amen? So you need, a, it's got to go past carnal knowledge. It has to become revelation. Faith only works in the realm of revelation. That's the only place where, where faith actually works. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to cast demons out of other people in a safe, in an easy, in a responsible way that, that is a form of ministry and even a form of evangelism that all of you should be doing. Amen. Every one of you should be doing. And I'm also going to teach you how to cast demons out of yourself. Amen. Two honest people there. Amen. Let me tell you, you all need this. Amen. You all need this. In the previous session, we learned how every human being has authority. Amen? Human beings have authority on this world. We were placed on this earth to rule and to reign, and we have authority over the spiritual realm, over the demonic. So even a normal person that is not even a believer can to a certain degree cast out demons out of people. Low, it's, it's a, it's a low-ranked authority, so as I've taught you, they're higher-ranking demons, so those demons are at a lower rank, but even a normal person, that's why you see some Muslims and shaman and them, they cast demons out, those are very low-ranked demons working on a low-rank authority. We know that as a born-again believer with Christ in us, that's the ultimate authority. Amen? Amen? But what I want to say as well is, as a human being, the authority that you have to cast demons out of yourself is at a very, very high level. Amen. Amen? It is really at a very, very high level because if you understand that you're a sovereign human being, that you have your own will, your own bodies, your own minds, your own destiny, when you grasp that revelation and you stand upon that revelation, you have such power 
to rule and reign over what are imposters. Amen? The demonic realm, they are imposters. Listen to me. They are spiritual parasites. That's it. Hollywood, and they've created this, this whole image of them. They are spiritual parasites. Amen? So you need to understand the authority, firstly, that you have in you to, 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 to take a stand and say, listen, this is my body. This is my mind. I, I have authority over what I think and what I allow myself to think. Amen? Amen. I have authority uh, over, over what I want to do. I, I, I don't have to let things control me and manipulate me. Amen. You have to take a stand in this area. And once you take that stand, it is so, so, so powerful. There's been many times where I've been doing deliverance and there's a strong anointing upon my life to do this. And I would be stuck with a certain demon that would not come out of the person. And I would be trusting in the, the anointing that is on me. And it would be at that point that I would... I would I'd speak to the person and I'd get them to say, listen, this is my body. This is my will. This is my life. You devil, you have got to get out of me. And from that point, I just say, go easy. The authority that you have within you over your sovereign life and your sovereign will is paramount. Amen? Amen. We must never forget the very important principle that if there is any spiritual activity in your life, it's because you have given it some kind of a permission to be there. These, the spiritual activity could have been imposed that's when people are, are abused, molested, raped. That's a, that's a spiritual imposition, but there are spiritual laws that are applied, and in and through that, there's spiritual transactions that take place. Demons enter in through that. There is also, if there is unopposed, where we willfully sin or we sin and we, we do not do anything about it, it's unopposed. So it's, it's imposed, it's unopposed, and then the last one is tolerated. That is when we are uh, given uh, emotions and, and intrusive thoughts and suggestions, and we just kind of accept it. And we never take a stand against it. Amen? This is also, and through this we give permission to these spiritual forces to function in our lives. So whenever there is something that is working in your life, it has permission to be there. The fundamental principle of deliverance is finding what that is, repenting before the Lord, asking for forgiveness, canceling whatever that is that's there, and only then are you able to remove the source of the spiritual oppression. Amen? Now, I want to tell you something that the devil knows no boundaries. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how much, how filled you are with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter how much you've fasted, how much you've prayed. If you open that door, he will come in. Guaranteed. You open the door, the devil will come in. It doesn't matter how spirit-filled you are. Amen? Amen? And it's so subtle. comes in ways that, that is, is so, it's just so subtle. Ways that you couldn't imagine. Ways that we think that is just normal life. But he uses this. Ephesians 4 verse 26 says, Don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For that unrepented anger gives a foothold to the devil. Wow. Now, 
we need to just accept the word. They don't, every, every word in the Bible is so perfectly strategically used. It's not like, like exaggerations or little nuances. Listen, if you get angry and you don't repent for that anger, and you go to bed at night, you have allowed a foothold. That is when someone opens a door and, and, and you try to close it and there's a foot in that door and it can't close. That night, those demons will slip in. I'm telling you, family, you have to hear what I'm saying. This word is the truth. Amen? Amen. Uncontrollable anger is an open door. And when you fail in this area, you must quickly repent. Don't wait for the sun to go down. You must repent. Listen, everybody gets angry. Or is it just me? Amen. And the three other honest people here. You all need deliverance. Amen. Even Jesus got angry, right? But do not let your anger control you and to become sin because any emotion that controls you is demonic. Now, you might think, Pastor Carl, you know, again, you're pushing it too far. Pastor Carl, again, how can you say anger can be demonic? Well, let me tell you a little story. I was praying for this lady once who, she had serious anger issues. And it came from her family, said her dad was also very angry. And she would just like lose her temper. She like struggled with the area of anger. And she also had some health issues where she had stomach problems, like really bad stomach problems, like, like RBS, but very bad. And um, there was, doctors couldn't really find out, nothing she took ever fixed it. And also she had these, these bouts of a very bad asthma that she would get, like a really strong debilitating asthma. And so I was just praying for this lady. Next minute, these really, really hectic demons manifested in this woman. And praise God for the angels because this spirit wanted to attack me. And the angels literally held, this, held them like this, and they couldn't move. I've seen this all the time. And I started to interrogate these demons and said, who are you? How did you get here? And it so happened that through the interrogation, but in and through this, this woman started to breathe like this, really this, this like a bad, wheezing, like a horror movie asthma. You know, like the whole picture, like sometimes I see stuff, I'm like, I think I'm in a horror movie. And you know, like breathing with this, you know, and, and this facing this thing. And it so happened that through the interrogation, it was discovered that the anger, the spirit of anger was fueling the sickness in her body. The sickness in her stomach was a spirit of infirmity and the asthma that was being fueled, that was being fed through this anger, and these spirits were working in conjunction. So we cast this spirit out and the spirits of infirmity, and afterwards we showed her the video and she never lost her temper again. <laughs> and she was perfectly healed. Perfectly healed. And it's so amazing when you, when, when you see these, 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 these things and it's just a, you just get this whole paradigm shift. And, and I've seen a tumor the size of probably a cucumber, a long tumor like this, on someone's side here literally disappear in a split second by casting a spirit of rejection out. By casting a spirit of rejection out. So your mental and emotional attitude 
can very well determine your state of health. And any of that, like that lady with the anger, if that was not dealt with then, she would have ended up with some dread disease. I mean, because that's what it would, would result in. So if you are constantly bitter, listen to me, listen to me, family. If you can't, if you, if you, if you bitter, if you're unforgiving, if you mean, if you're negative, if you have self-pity, if you like to complain and like to argue, you are attracting sickness and disease in your body. It feeds the demonic. It enables the demonic. It brings destruction in your life. The Bible says where there is strife, there is all the workings of the devil. When you, when you get into strife, when you get into arguments, if you could see in the supernatural spiritual realm, you would run for your life. There is all the works of the devil. You need to avoid, just like you would avoid someone that has a contagious disease, you need to avoid strife like that. You need to avoid arguing in the same way. You need to avoid self-pity. You need to avoid negative thinking. It attracts, it creates the, the atmosphere for the demonic to take root in your body and to manifest in sickness. Philippians 2 verse 14. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may be blameless and pure, children of God without fault. In a crooked and perverse generation, which you will shine as lights to this world. So you can decide now, are you going to be the crooked and the perverse? Complaining and arguing. Or are you going to start to shine like a pure, blameless child of God? Amen? You see, we have to start doing this on purpose. When you have the motivation and, and the knowledge and, and the insight, it helps. The majority of sickness and disease is demonic. The majority of it is. Acts 10 verse 38, the New King James Version, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all of those who were sick. Is that what it says? Healing all of those who were oppressed by the devil. Again, this is not just clever words. Sickness is an oppression from the devil. And if you give place in these areas, this is what will happen. Amen? And when you start to see clearly this correlation, these things that I'm teaching you and the things that I've seen, you start to get like really motivated to obey scriptures. Because the, the scriptures, then you start to realize that all of the commandments in the scriptures is not really there just to make your life miserable. It's there, it's a, it's a survival guide. It's there to, to help you to survive and to thrive in an environment that is extremely hostile, extremely dangerous. It's the Word of God and obedience to the Word of God is our safety. Amen. And apart from that, you, you will never make it. The Scripture says, uh, well, Jesus told a parable where he said that all trees look the same. Because we, we need to start to analyze our lives. We need to start to, to do some inward pers perspective. And Jesus said, all trees look the same, but you will know a tree by its fruit. I mean, say fruit. So if you want to understand how the demonic realm works, we're going to look at how the Holy Spirit works because... They follow the same set of rules. Amen? I've taught you that. I'm not going to uh, elaborate there. So we look at Galatians 5 verse 22, the New Living Translation. But the Holy Spirit, say Spirit. Spirit. So the indwelling of this Spirit, the indwelling of this Holy Spirit, there will be evidence of this Holy Spirit. There will be fruit that will appear. 
and he produces this kind of fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So if you want to analyze your life and you want to see if there is another spirit working there, let's flip this around. But the unholy spirit produces this kind of fruit. Hate, depression, strife, anxiety, bitterness, nastiness, disloyalty, aggression, and lack of self-control. This is spiritual language, this. This is spiritual truths right here. And so often we are looking at others, trying to find the, the horns and the, and the pitchforks in others, but every morning when we look in the mirror, we might just be looking at one. Amen. Amen. You see, you, it, I need to first show you that there are problems. If you don't know that there are problems, you're never going to be able to fix it. And this is the strategy of the enemy. He is so subtle. Creates this distraction with Hollywood where we look at that and we, we get this picture of what those are demons, but what we don't really understand is they're functioning very much in our everyday emotions because all of these are emotions. So anything where... You don't have self-control. Because you see, the, the one thing that locks that all together, the one thing that locks the fruit all together in the Holy Spirit is self-control. This is the key. Because you, when you created an image and the likeness of God. You never created to be dominated by your feelings. That's not normal. I want you to know it's not normal. You were never created to be dominated by your emotions. If you are, it's not normal. You were never created to be dominated by our lusts. That's not normal. Amen? Wherever there is something where you have a lack of self-control, that means there is something there that is influencing and controlling. Where if it, and you know, it can be depression, anxiety, bitterness, anger, lust, gossip, lying, fear. It's all demon spirits. Didn't the Lord say in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is an emotion. Amen. It's something that we experience. The ESV said God, did, did, God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, of love, and self-control. So if fear... And anything in the emotional realm of fear doesn't, where you don't have a sound mind about it, where your mind is tormented in, in, over a certain emotion, if fear is tormenting you and you don't have control over it, it's a spirit. Amen? If anxiety is tormenting you and you, and you, you don't have self-control of it, it's a spirit. If unforgiveness is tormenting you and you don't have control over it, it's a spirit. If jealousy is tormenting you and you don't have a sound mind, you can put anything there. You were never created to be dominated and controlled by anything. Can I have an amen? amen. Another area where you need to analyze, because we're analyzing, we're, we're, we're sitting in the doctor's office, we are getting a, diag what is it, a prognosis or a diagnosis. What comes out of your mouth? So many people say, Pastor, you know what? God knows my heart. You want to know what's in your heart? Let's see, Luke 6 verse 45. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. An evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. 
what you say flows from what is in your heart. Wow. Listen, foul mouth, foul heart. Now you need it. You guys need a bit of a wake up, eh? Amen. Foul heart, foul mouth. Don't come and tell me, Pastor, God knows my heart, but you're swearing like a sailor, man. You, 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 <laughs> yeah, amen. Amen. Perverse jokes is a perverse heart. Amen. So, what is coming out of your mouth? Are you always negative? Are you always complaining? Are you always arguing? What's coming out of your mouth? These are questions we need to ask ourselves. Amen? We need to analyze. We need to look. The word is so amazing because it shows us. It's like looking in a mirror and you're like, whoa, okay. We, we've got some work to do here. Amen? Yeah. I mean, how many of you got some work to do here? Yeah? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We all have work to do. The minute you think you don't, <laughs> you're off track. Any area of your life, no matter how natural it seems, if it's negative, it's from the kingdom of darkness. If it's destructive, it's from the kingdom of darkness. If it's a lack of control, it's from the kingdom of darkness. And the wonderful news is that you do not have to tolerate any of this. You do not have to put up with any of it. The only reason it's there is because you're just kind of like putting up with it. Amen. You do not have to put up with any of it. And I want to give you an example of what happened to me recently. So we were preparing for the Jesus Festival here in Saldana. And at that time, we had moved three times, and we were also planning to move to this building. And there was a ton of work to do here as well as at the Jesus Festival. And over and above my other responsibilities that I have. So I started to get under pressure, started to even feel anxious. And it started to get really, really bad because, you know, you're so busy with stuff, you don't really pick it up. And, and you know, you are busy, so it's kind of normal to feel frustrated and in a, in a fluster. But it started to get, like, really bad where every time I had to deal with something, it, it just felt too much and my heart would race and, and I remember even once just going and lying down and just like kind of, you know, breathing and just calming myself down and, and I could have easily have thought, oh, you know what, it's just, just so hectic, I just need to take time off. But I, I, you know, I, I, I've, like, I've come out of the matrix, as you know, you know, and I realized that that's not normal. I used to think it was at one stage and I used to just medicate it. But I realize because I live outside of the matrix, and I realize, no, hang on a second, this is not normal. This is not normal. And I knew enough to know that the enemy will always attack you in a weak spot. Wherever he has the opportunity, he's constantly scanning and watching and waiting for an opportunity to catch you in a way he can catch you. Your weak spot is where he's going to hit you. Always. We see with Jesus when he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, Matthew 4 verse 2. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and he became very, he became hungry. So he's weak, he's, 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 now he's, he's hungry now. Scripture says he became very hungry. Well, if that's pointed out in Scripture, he must have been really hungry. So what does the devil do? Tempt him with a woman in a bikini? <laughs> no. <laughs> during that time, during his hunger, the devil came and said to him, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Amen? He, he hit him where there was a weak spot. You ladies have a weak spot every month. <laughs> Jesus, help us. 
Amen. Amen. And the scripture says, Luke 4 verse 13, when the, de- when the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him never to return again. No, he left him until the next opportunity. The next opportunity. You've got to realize, you've got to look past what you see. Man, if it's a temptation, you've got to understand there's moeilijkheid behind there. Moeilijkheid. Amen? You've got to start to understand these things. It's all a setup. Amen? So with me, the devil slipped in unnoticed. He knew he couldn't tempt me with a woman in bikini. I'm over that. <laughs> Amen. I'm over that. So he slipped in and he started to begin his destructive plan because this is how it works. When, when, when one comes in, it's, 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 you've, you've fallen into a trap where there is like a snowball of events that take place. It's like these dominoes. You flip the one, the next one goes, the next one goes, the next one goes, the next one goes. So it'll come in subtly with something that seems innocent, something that seems, you know, it's okay, it's not too serious. But ultimately, the goal of these demonic spirits is to destroy you. Literally, to destroy you. We're going to look quickly at an example where Jesus explains to us how the spiritual realm works in this area, and you can see what happens. We're also going to look at a few clues. In Matthew 12, verse 43, the New King James Version. Now, we don't know if this demon spirit was cast out of the person or if this demon spirit left on its own. The Scripture's not clear, so it could be either of the two. When an unclean spirit, a demon, goes out of a man, he, say he, he he goes through dry places, say dry dry places, seeking rest, say rest, Rest. and he finds none. And then he, say he, He. say says, Says. I will return to my house, say my house, from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him, say him. It's a he, him, not a them, they. (laughs) Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter. How did they enter? They enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Okay, let's look at some, some clues. Firstly, this demon spirit is a he. It's a person. It's a spirit. Do you know you are a spirit? You're, this is just an earth suit. Amen? You're a spirit. These are spirits without earth suits. So this demon is a he, it's a personality, it speaks, it says, it thinks and it reasons, it has emotions, it's seeking rest, hello, and it can't find rest, it can't find peace, so it has a mental, emotional state, it finds a dry place, so it it can actually feel dryness, it can feel It has feelings. It has feelings. And we can see that this demon spirit outside of a human body, which he calls his home, has no rest. A demon spirit outside, they're imposters. They're not supposed to be in this realm. Amen? So outside, they're outside of a human body outside of an earth suit they have no rest they have no peace it's torture for them amen it's like being in the arctic without an arctic suit so they are highly motivated to get inside of people and to stay in people 
And what we can see through this is this person's state was made worse and was in a bad state because of the demonic spirits. Amen. Amen. So if your life is in a mess, there's a very strong possibility and even probability that there is spiritual forces at work, undercover. And what is also interesting, that one spirit acted as a gateway for seven more wicked spirits and seven more spirits than itself. That spirit was a gateway. And that spirit went and seven other spirits came through that spirit. And those seven spirits that came in wanted to do the same thing, get seven more spirits. Amen? So before you think that you can tolerate certain sins and certain things that are not so bad, you need to understand that you are playing with fire. Because these spirits work together. The one got seven. That lady that had the, the stomach issues and uh, the asthma, it was linked to anger. The woman that had the, the, the cancer tumor was rejection. So these spirits work together. Th this is, I've just seen like a glimpse of, of how it works. I mean, this could be so vast, but you don't know what of the, the, the little sins that you are tolerating is actually messing up your life. The scripture says it's the small foxes that ruins the vine. You might think, oh, you know what, I'm okay, but, but you want to smoke. That smoking could be uh, holding back your breakthrough Amen. if the Lord told you to stop. Amen? Amen. Those, uh, uh, that unforgiveness could be a cause of cancer that's on the way. Amen. Amen? Those lustful eyes of yours where you just check out the, the poppies and that, <laughs> the girls in the bikinis, I tell you, that could be spirits that's uh, working in conjunction with that spirit holding back your breakthrough, keeping you in lack. You cannot tolerate the, w the devil. I have learned in my long walk in the school of hard knocks, of wanting to, okay, listen, I'll do this, but I just want to keep this. Get this. Okay, I'll get rid of that, but this, you know, it's not so bad. And slowly, after many years, I finally got to the point where I've realized that the holier that I live, the more successful I am in life. I promise you, it's the truth. I've become, I, I'm literally paranoid about sin, really, because I have such a strong revelation of how it works. Family, the... the um, the enemy is so subtle. I want to tell you a story. And a, there's a wonderful lady that we're working with that came out of a very, very bad um, life situation. She was born in a family of an Illuminati bloodline. And in and through this, as a little child, they started to train her on how to do witchcraft. And she says, as a little kid, they were teaching her how to do this. And she thought, wow, because they, they, they say this is to make the world a better place. And, and, and she felt, you know, she's going to make the world a better place. There was a heart. And they trained her in this. And, and once you get stuck in that, and that witchcraft comes in, it's, a, it's just a slippery road down. She got involved in a special occult order and um, got very, very... Involved in this, she would travel in the celestial plane and meet with certain world leaders on this celestial plane where they function and where they have meetings in the demonic realm. And these demons showed her symbolism that she tattooed all over her body. And she explains of how life got really bad because things started to get to a point where they were doing things in these orders that she didn't agree with. And it just started to get to a point where she was not going to go down that road. And so 
she left that and she tells how she even met Satan. She was groomed all her life to be a vessel for this very powerful deity. And this was offered to her by Satan. And the story is so amazing because uh, God intervened, like, in an incredible way and rescued this, this precious woman. And one day, we're really hoping that she's going to, well, we're not hoping, we know that uh, her testimony is going to be out there and it's going to change many, many lives. But when you come out of that life and you, you break the agreements with the kingdom of darkness, there's always repercussions. And so they want to kill her and want, have wanted to kill her. So she's had to live a very disciplined life in serving the Lord. And she would tell me how everything would be fine and she would, everything would be okay. And then she would... She, she, had, she was still struggling with, a, with a, a smoking habit, and she would just she'd say, Pastor Cole, I would take one, one drag of that um, vape, and that would open up the door for all of those demons to come back. So you have the privilege of people that function in the spiritual realm where, where normal people wouldn't understand this. You know, you, you people are not sensitive to these things. So the point I'm trying to get across to you is, if the Lord is speaking to you about something in your life that you need to stop, you need to stop it. Don't ever think that it's innocent. Don't ever think that it does not have repercussions because it does. Amen? Amen. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11, the NIV, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Most of us are unaware of his schemes. And we must not be unaware of his schemes. We must not get outwitted by the devil. If you get outwitted by the devil, it's a serious matter. So you want to know what was the first part of that scripture and see if maybe you've been outwitted by the devil? Let's read from the beginning. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 10, the NIV. Anyone you forgive, I also forgive and what I have forgiven, if there is anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his evil schemes. Unforgiveness, forgiveness was mentioned five times. If you're in unforgiveness, you have been caught out. You have been outwitted. The enemy has got full access to your life to bring absolute destruction. Amen in your finances, in your relationships, in your body, in your health. You cannot be in unforgiveness. It is a trap. Amen? We forgive not for, not for their sake, for our sake. Amen? I forgive people because I, don't want, I want my blessings. I don't want nothing to compromise my salvation. I don't want nothing to compromise my, my blessings. I want to stay in blessings. Amen? I don't want the devil in my life. If it means I've got to forgive someone, listen, I'll forgive him. If I've got to forgive them every day, I'll forgive them every day. If I've got to forgive them 10 times a day, I'll do it. Amen. 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 We cannot walk in unforgiveness. So quickly now, we're going to go back to the story where I was uh, telling you about where this spirit came in and you need to understand that at that point, because, you know, many people say with the scripture, with Matthew 12, verse 43, the devil came back, it was empty, it was swept clean, and they say, you know, it's just because the Holy Spirit's not there, which is actually, it's not the truth. It, it's because the knowledge isn't there. The scripture says, as I 4, verse 6, my people, Christians, you and me, are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Today, I'm giving you knowledge, knowledge of things that have been destroying your lives. Amen? So it's the lack of the knowledge that is being, being destroyed. But for me, when this spirit of anxiety came in, and it was a spirit, at that point in my life, I was, I was on a, like a 30-day fast. I was praying in tongues two hours a day, every single day, because we were doing it for the, for the Jesus Festival. 
I was so full of the Holy Spirit, you couldn't get me fuller. But yet I had opened the door because I had allowed and tolerated and not rejected and not opposed this anxiety that came in. And because I did not oppose it, it came in. And so I went before the Lord. And Scripture says, Philippians 4 verse 6, the New King James Version, do not be anxious about anything. That's a commandment. Do you know what power that is in there? Those of you that are struggling with anxiety, do you know how much power there is in there? You can read that and you can say, Father, I don't have to be anxious. This, whatever this is, I'm not going to be anxious about it. You draw strength from the Word. Amen? And so I, I knew this. I mustn't be anxious about anything. I mustn't be anxious about this. So I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, I repent. Because I, I, I repent for giving place to this anxiety. I repent for allowing this anxiety to influence and affect my sovereign body. Lord, please forgive me. And please remove whatever legal rights that it had gained through me tolerating it. And as soon as I had done that, I had now, through repentance and forgiveness, because it's a spiritual activity, it can only be dealt with spiritually. And that is through repentance. First, then forgiveness. Then I said, put my hands on myself. I said, you spirit of anxiety, fear, in the name of Jesus Christ, you go. And I felt a manifestation, like a, <coughs> like a cough, which was the first proof that there was a spirit there. And then after that, that anxiety was gone completely. Amen. Completely. Completely. And you can do exactly the same. You must do exactly the same. And remember in Mark 9 verse 25, when Jesus spoke to the Spirit and defined it through the activity. Amen. It says there, listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. Amen. Amen. So you can say, you spirit that is, that is causing this lust. You must go in Jesus' name. You spirit that's causing this mental torment. You spirit that's causing this fear. You spirit that's causing this jealousy. You spirit that's causing this bitterness. You spirit that's causing this unforgiveness. Whatever it is, you must come against it. And you must command it to go in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 31. For if we were judging ourselves, we would not come under judgment. You must judge yourself. You must judge your actions. You must judge your, your emotions. You must judge your thoughts. You must judge your motives. You must judge yourself. If you are not in a position where you are judging yourself, you are under such a massive deception because the enemy is just going to continue in your life unopposed, doing whatever he wants. And you think it's just normal, things that you've got to get over. No, it's not normal. So you need to, and the scripture says, we must aim to be like Jesus. That's not a, a, a you know what, as a Christian, it's a good idea to kind of like strive to be like Jesus. No, you, you must strive to put on the image of Christ. You have to, it's, as a Christian, one of your, just like you mustn't swear, you mustn't lie, you must pray, you must read your word, you must strive to be like Christ. Can I have a big amen? amen? You must strive to be like him. That is a commandment. Colossians 3 verse 10. Put on your new nature. Put it on. Put on your new nature. It's not going to happen automatically. It's something you've got to put on, something that you've got to do. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. You see, when you... When you aim to, to, to be in the image of Christ, then you have a template and then you can look at your life because I would, I would go through things and I'm like, I wonder if Jesus would, 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 would have dealt with this. 
you know, or have, have, have gone through this. And if not, well, then it's not for me. Amen? So that is a wonderful template that will help you. But now also, when you, when you find out these issues that you are dealing with, repentance is absolutely crucial. You, you always, you must always never lose that. The, the longer you are staying in repentance, your repentance is your partnership with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Listen to me. I know I preach a hard word sometimes. I, I came from 15-year drugs. You know, I was into, I, I had serious lust issues. I had serious drug issues. I had serious violence issues. I had serious issues upon issues. And you're going to fail. You're going to mess up a lot. But you need to always, the, the, the repentance part is, is the partnership. It's the umbilical cord to, to the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, you know what? You're going to mess up with porn probably. I hope not, but look, you know, and it happens. And the devil's going to tell you, oh, no, what, you can't repent. You've done it again. No, you, you go and you say, Lord, man, I don't want to do this. Lord, I, I, I repent of this. You see, when, when you're in that state of repentance, you're on the surgery table. And it's a, it's a, it's a lifetime of surgery. But the minute you, because what the enemy does is he causes you to do things then he covers it with shame. Shame is also a spirit. Then you feel like, you know what, I'm a failure. That's condemnation. There's no condemnation for those in Christ. But there is conviction. The Holy Spirit says, you know what, yeah, you, know, you shouldn't have done this. But you know what, I've already paid for this anyways. And I love you. And, and, and you know what, when I called you, I knew you were going to do this anyway. So I still loved you and I still called you. So I'm still with you every step of the way. And you stay in that repentance. You say, Lord, man, I've messed up again. I messed up again. I repent. Please forgive me. Please remove the legal rights that it had. Then you must speak to it. And say, you devils that caused me to fail this time. You're not welcome in this body. Yes, I messed up this time, but I belong to Jesus. I don't want you in my body. This is not your home. This is the home of the Holy Spirit. You must go in Jesus' name. And then maybe you'll feel like a, a yawn or something like that. That's a manifestation. Amen? And you must do this, but first you must resist. When the temptation comes, it's a person. It's a he, him. And if you don't watch out, they'll bring a them, they. <laughs> But you must resist. Remember last week. You must resist. You must resist. Come on, it's a person. You can imagine a person coming. So listen, you must go in Jesus' name. Amen. And eventually you will get freedom. But now always remember, Revelation 12 verse 7, the NIV. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. So be patient. They're not just going to go out and say, oh, all right, you know, we're going to go. You have to be patient. You have to be resilient. You have to keep pushing. They will push back. They don't want to go to dry places and, and where there's no rest and no peace. So you have to be patient. When you pray for yourself, be patient. Keep on trying. Everybody who I've coached in this, initially there was no breakthrough but as they persevered it breakthrough just came amen so now you need to now this is your homework you need to now start analyzing your life i call it a spiritual hit list and you write on that hit list in every area where you think you've got issues and I, I, I would recommend that you, that you find scriptures, at least one scripture on that. It's very easy. Google scripture anxiety. And you put a scripture there. Remember when, when Satan attacked Jesus three times? What did he say? It is written. Satan was the highest, 
highest enemy. And he used the word. You draw strength from it. Just like with anxiety. Read it. I mustn't be anxious about anything. I don't have to be anxious about anything. Hallelujah. I make up my mind. I'm not going to be anxious. Amen. I choose not to be anxious. Anxiety comes. No. I don't, have to, I don't have to be anxious. You must go in Jesus' name. So you create your spiritual hit list. And then you go before the Lord and you say, Lord, I repent of this. I, I realize this is not right. I repent for allowing these emotions to uh, attack me, harass me. I repent for this. Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Remove whatever legal rights that this had there because it's got permission. Lord, please remove that. And then you stand on your sovereignty and you say, you wicked spirit of whatever it is, depression, you have no place in this body. I reject you in the name of Jesus Christ. I reject everything you stand for. You come out of me and you get violent, man. You get violent. <laughs> you tell that thing to go in the name of Jesus Christ. I tell you, this can change your life and it can save your life. Really it can. Really it can. And then once you've done that, start to go deeper. If there is generational sickness in your family, like my father died of a heart attack, my mom of cancer. So then I, I, I started to, to, to say, Lord, I repent. Look, because if the ancestral sin can affect you, then you can, and, and it's connected to you, then you can repent for it. Because it's connected to you. So I would say, Lord, I, I repent for whatever my ancestors done, which allowed that, this, this early death and this, this, this uh, heart attack to, to come in and this heart disease to come in. And Lord, I just repent for that. In the name of Jesus, I put hands on myself. I said, you spirit of heart attack and heart disease come out. Guess what? Manifestation. <laughs> I'm telling you. Now, that's on my hit list every now and then. Make sure it's not there. The longer it's there left unopposed, the more it starts to manifest. Check yourself for cancer. Check yourself for, for issues in the womb. Check yourself for all of these things. You've got to do this. It's your homework. Don't just listen to what I'm telling you. Do what it says. It will rescue your life. Now I want to tell you quickly how you can cast demons out of other people. Just stand up quickly. Stretch, shake around, slap your neighbor. <laughs> okay. Okay, tell him you're sorry. It's the pastor's fault. Okay. Okay, you can sit back down again. So, I taught you that, there, that there's different deliverance for different reasons. Do you remember with, with Jesus where he was waiting? There was this, I mean, this kid was manifesting, rolling around on the ground and going crazy, and Jesus like hanging around. So how long has this been going on for? Which is also a clue, generational, as I taught you. But he was like just really chilled out. And they said that when he saw all the spectators coming, then he said, okay, now's the time. It was a specific deliverance. Now, there's a deliverance that you can all do for ministry, for evangelism. You can, every single one of you, just as a human being, can cast out a low rank demon. Okay, so I'm, I'm just getting you in a comfort zone. You, like, just starting there, as you are, you already can. Amen? Amen. And as a, as a child of God, you have an even higher authority Amen. to cast out even higher ranked demons. Amen? Amen? So now, if you are willing, and you go before the Lord, and you say, Lord, I am willing, he's going to open up opportunities for you. And then you're going to go, and then you're going to see some people who are struggling. Many people are struggling, family. Many people are struggling with, with fear, anxiety, depression, unworthiness, rejection. I mean, those five, fear, anxiety, unworthiness, rejection. What is the other one? Depression. Listen. You can be almost 99% guaranteed that if you go and speak to, uh, to someone, and, and they need solutions. They don't need, they don't need you to preach to them. They need solutions. 
and you can see so and God will pull you out of your comfort zone. It might be even, even be in public. You pull you out your, your comfort zone and you'll say that one. And you're like, oh, really? <laughs> okay. And you'll go and you'll just, just be like, just really chilled and just, just out of a heart of love and just say, hey, you know what? The Lord's just put, me on your, put you on my heart, you know? Are you okay? And, um, you know, they'll just say, oh, okay. So, well, you know, I just sense that, you know, I could be wrong. You tell me, but, you know, are you maybe struggling with feelings of unworthiness or fear or rejection? Just let the Holy Spirit flow. He'll, he'll, he'll help you, you know. And this is, this, is all, this is all safe. This is all, you, you can all comfortably do this. These are low-ranked demons. They're very easy to cast out. Amen. And then you just speak to this person. They might say, yeah, you know, and uh, say, you know what? You don't have to be super spiritual or super weird. Just say, no, I, can I pray for you? I, I believe that, that, you know, that the Lord can remove this from your life. If they, if they agree, then you've come into agreement, which is a spiritual principle. Very important. It says this, Matthew 18, verse 19, Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done by my Father who is in heaven. So the minute they agree, guess what? God is in this 100%. Just say to them, you know, can you believe with me that God can, can help you with this? And I can tell you, like 100% of the time that people will say, oh, you know, let's do this. And it's so simple. You just take them by the hand. You, you just say, Lord, Lord, I just pray for my, my brother, my sister. Lord, I'm just asking you in Jesus' name that you will just remove this, this fear that they're experiencing, this anxiety. Just remove this feelings of unworthiness, this feelings of rejection in Jesus' name. And as you're saying that, that person will be, be, be resonating with that. And then you just calmly just say, in Jesus' name, I command that fear to go. In Jesus' name, I command that depression to leave. In Jesus' name, I command that anxiety to go. Whatever it is, that rejection, I command it to go. And just watch. And you will, you will see the power of the Holy Spirit working. You might see manifestations where the person might, might cough, or they might burp, or they might projectile vomit in your face. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. <laughs> that's not going to happen. It does happen sometimes, but that's not going to happen to you. <laughs> and then you just, just watch, and, you, and you'll see, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed, and afterwards you'll see, you know, they'll come out of this, and, and even tears are a, a, a manifestation. A, a runny nose is a manifestation. Uh, coughing, <laughs> a little bit of burping. These are all manifestations. I mean, that person, they never runny nose. They weren't crying. They weren't burping and all of that before. Now, all of a sudden, this has happened. This is proof. And then afterwards, you just say, how are you feeling? And they'll say, wow, you know, I'm feeling so light. I'm feeling so good. You say, well, you know what? You, why don't you come to our church? Come to Cross Encounter Ministries. Amen. And that's what you do. Because ultimately, they need to be here. They need to be here. Now, I, please, I want to I wanna challenge you. I want to encourage you. The scripture says these signs will follow those who believe. If you are a believer, you should be complete compelled to cast demons out of people. That should drive you. You should be compelled to lay hands on the sick and the sick to be healed. That's what Jesus said. These are my believers. So I pray that the seed will be sown in your heart, that you will, you will firstly start doing deliverance on yourself, live it. But that shouldn't stop you from starting to pray for other people. And that, I promise you, that'll stir up such a fire in your heart and the Lord will use you so much. Amen. And it doesn't have to be weird. So easy. You can all do it. Leave the weird stuff up to me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>